Getting out in the wilderness is more than a leisure activity for me. It's a lifestyle. I crave it and need it. Now I will spend 17 days traversing some of the most remote wilderness in Newfoundland, Canada. This is what I love to do. And my dog Saku, he's always by my side. It's late July in Newfoundland as another expedition into the wilderness is about to begin. To reach the starting line we drive down the long winding road to Burgio on the south coast of the island. The community is picturesque and you feel proud to be from our province as you walk down the streets, beaches and gaze out at the sea. Here, final moments are cherished with our family before saying goodbye once again. From Burgio, we take a two-hour ferry ride to the hidden gem of Grey River aboard the MV Marine Voyager. Moving through the thick North Atlantic fog, our view is obscured, but eventually the sun sneaks a peak and the impressive coastline is revealed. In transit, Saku sits patiently with his game face on. He can always smell adventure. Then, as we near land, the fog rises and the gateway to Grey River opens. The boat enters. We slice into the deep 1,000 foot fjord, which was cut by glaciers thousands of years ago. As houses appear, I get a shiver down my spine. This place is magical. With the ferry leaving us behind, we better acquaint ourselves with the small remote community. There are just 100 people living here, but they have the heart of a country. After only a brief visit, I understand why they would never want to leave. The peace and simplicity is invigorating, and there's inspiration all around. I hope there's always life in Grey River. One man helping the cause is lifetime resident Alvin Young. He owns the general store which keeps the Grey River supplied and running. He's also a kind soul and treated us to a ride nine kilometers up the fjord to his cabin where we would stay the evening. 
from there, the expedition would start tomorrow morning. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate you his help. Yeah. 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 Big, nice meeting you too. Yeah, nice meeting you, sir. yeah absolutely. Yeah. Before leaving, Alvin and his buddy Vic Rose gave me some valuable tips regarding the vast country that lay ahead. Yeah, just in the morning, morning when you go in there, you want to make my up that hill and you see what that outcrop is up there? Yeah. That, that rock up there you will make on that little path will take you down and you go around two ponds. So see the ridge right here? Yeah. Now First beyond thing. that it gets higher, there's another ridge. Yeah, I'm going to the right, to right of that. that oil ridge. You're going to be to the right of that the right, where it drops down, you can yep. see where it starts. That's okay. right, you see where it drops down there and then you go into a valley with two little ponds there. Still on the ground the ponds is on the left hand. Okay, left hand side. Okay. Right. Going in, okay? And then you get into the bottom. And then you go in and... Um, now we were ready to go. What do you think, Zach? Ready to go? Let a boy, Zach. Let's go. Hey guys, how's it going? How's it going? Hope you're all doing well. As you can see, me and old Saki boy are out on another trip. Uh, this time, where are we to, Sack? We're down in southern, southern Newfoundland in a remote area. And look at that view behind us. It is absolutely amazing. Freaking nuts. Uh, my mind's boggled looking down at these fjords here, uh, the real rugged and the, the boat ride in was amazing, everything. So for this trip, uh, we have around 220 odd kilometers to get us back home. 
Uh, the most difficult part of this trip is going to be the start of it. Uh, of course, we just climbed up this big ridge behind us to get up out of the fjorded valley. And uh, we had to go up the Grey River and the surrounding country. We'll stay to the west of the river. And uh, that, it's going to be a difficult climb. Uh, that will take us about 80 or 90 kilometers to Mealpeg Lake. But from there, it will be all downhill. I have about 24 days to do this trip. Well, 24 days to be exact, because on the 25th day, I have an important, uh, important commitment. So uh, we're on a bit of a timeline. So this is it. Uh, there's going to be lots more wicked scenery. Hopefully some good fishing, uh, some good wildlife sightings, hopefully plenty of those. So we're really happy to have you along for this one. Super excited to bring you. And uh, that's it, it's time to go. Saku, let's get back to work buddy, come on. Nice moose bed there. Plenty of fresh moose tracks around. Uh, so, we might see one. Hey, Sack, Sack, what do you think, bud? Can you smell any moose or what? We'll see. We're still on the old trail that uh, the people of Grey River used to get into this country to do a bit of hunting or whatever. And uh, but we're about ready to break free, I'd say, pretty soon in some trackless country. And it's going to be that way for the next, you know, 80 odd kilometers to Mealpeg Lake. So, going to get a drink of water here at the small little pond. Saku's out there swimming, cooling off. And uh, we'll carry on from there. What do you think? Get it, boy, get it. Nice little pond here, though, yeah, for a drink. Hey, Sack. <laughs> You're not, Sack. Had to go back and get Zach, he got caught up. How's it going, Zach? Your bag fell off, hey? All right, hold on, let's get get here. And then we stumbled on a few bake apples. Looky, looky. Didn't we say? Nice patch. So, I'm gonna sit down and have a little snack. Just exploding with juice. Exploding with it. Sack's gone to town. What a nice snack that is. So with, uh, with a good mixture of walking on this trip, uh, mostly walking starting off, but uh, also some paddling in between, and later on in the trip when we go down river, uh, I brought along the old raft. So right now is our first chance to use it. Uh, the small lake here is probably 
kilometre and a half long and instead of beating the bush around side of it some of the tough terrain uh, there's a lot of tuckamore short stunted spruce and there's rocks and there's holes and so we take a break from that I'm gonna paddle across and inflate the raft that's the plan right now we're making pretty good time uh, considering the terrain we've gone through when we climbed up out of the fjord I think we got close on six kilometers covered and uh, it's around mid-afternoon so I'm gonna get across this lake and I might consider calling it a day uh, don't want to go too hard on day one red ants all over me that's one thing with the summer once it gets dry red ants are everywhere up here in this kind of country crawling up you like tonight when I find a campsite I'm gonna to try to find one that's on a big flat rock that way uh, there's less of a chance there'll be red ants on the go and on top of the red ants there's big old stouts flying around and the stouts are the real big flies uh, I'll show you later on at some point maybe uh, the chunks they take out of your arm every time they bite you so real big flies and I got a couple spots on my arm just looks like a cut is that big right so they bite they take big chunks out of you but that's it it's a part of being out here and uh, it won't hurt you So that's it, about 10 minutes, we're loaded up, ready to go, and uh, we'll save a bit of energy this way instead of tramping over the land. <laughs> One sec. Nice for a change, hey say. <laughs> just gas after that hike up at the fjord. Holy smokes. We just went straight up a wall pretty much for I don't know a couple kilometers, whatever it was. But that's how the day started and uh whew, took the good out of me. An old sacky boy too. But that's it. That's probably the worst climb we'll have up any kind of ridges or hills for sure I can't see it being any worse by looking at the maps and that nothing nothing seems as steep as that climbing that quick you know so a little float here now but it won't be much longer <laughs> another 10 minutes we'll be out hiking again We also got a fine load here in the alpaca. We're looking at about 350 pounds in the raft. And it's about max capacity. You wouldn't want to put much more in this. But it gets the job done. And uh, she's a hell of a vessel. That's where he went, 
up that hill there, up over the top, and around to the other side. And we're going up through here. So, I just gave a ball, just to let them know we're coming through. Go on! Go on! The boys are coming through, aren't we, Sack? I think he's long gone now. Hopefully. So we got a nice flat rock here, or flat enough for a campsite. Uh, it's the best way to do it in this country, in my opinion. So all these little erratic boulders that were strewn all through here by glaciers are gonna have to be moved, or at least this one here. I hate to do it. Sorry, bud. I know you've been here for a long time. Now you're getting moved. Look, you can just see like a little area kind of discolored versus the rest of the rock. And that rock right there has been there for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. Really strikes a chord with you when you do something like that. And, uh, Really makes you think about how this land was created and how insignificant we are but that little rock is no different than us I just moved his home just like we'd move a home just like me and Saki got a new home tonight Every outdoor landscape possesses its own unique pros and cons for the camper to be aware of. For example, while thick woods often makes it difficult to find a campsite, abundant fuel for the fire is usually close by. However, in the high open country, the opposite can occur. Camp's all set up. I had to throw down four rocks and tie them onto the corners of the tent because it's pretty windy up here. Two right there, because the bottom one's a bit light. Uh, another one there, and the fourth one is under the bag. Actually, I got five. And then tonight when I shut her down, I'll uh, I don't know, I'll probably just leave the door open so we can get a breeze in, so I probably won't put a rock out there. But, that's it now, I got a bit of wood, a little mound. Uh, solar panels over there on that rock, getting a bit of charge here in the evening hours. I've been going down to this little water hole at the top of my finger, only a small little spot. Uh, it's not connected to this one. It's a separate one, there's a little hole right here, just enough to get a bit of water to boil the kettle and for me and Sacco to have a cold drink. Uh, 
<clears throat> and what about old Mr. Black Bear, eh? Well, we're, that's the lake we're on. That's where he jolted over that hill, and I'd say now he's many, many kilometers away. Uh, I had to set camp up here. I didn't want to go any further. We were gassed, so that's it. I've seen plenty of black bears in Newfoundland, and only once uh, did they ever stick around. <clears throat> so it should be all good. Either way, we'll be keeping our ears and eyes open. And of course, Saku here in the tent. Old Saku boy, hey Sack. You'll know long before me. He will, he'll know long before me, so. It's uh, just coming up uh, at 8 o'clock. Uh, I'm gonna sit back and once the sun gets a little bit lower, I don't got a whole lot of wood there, so I'm gonna wait for the sun to sink a bit further and I'll get a fire going and uh, boil the kettle. Good job today, sack boy. Good job, buddy. What are you doing, hey? What are you taking the mat up? Ghostly looking out there. Holy smokes. What do you think, Sack? Let's go take a look, buddy. <laughs> Get him, Sack. Get him. You'll never get him, Sack. Sack is down after the squirrels now. <laughs> There's a couple there in a little rock hollow just out from camp. Sack's chasing squirrels and I'm having a cup of coffee now in the morning hours. Uh, it's just past 8 a.m. And, whew. Bag diddly bagged here to Smarnin. Just easing ourselves into the trip, and uh, you can expect that early. You know, we're out for could be three weeks or so, and uh, you can go on a trip that long without resupplies. You know, you're just going to have a heavy pack. Uh, but it gets lighter with each day as you eat food and. Right now, uh, mine's, uh, mine started at around 80 pounds, roughly, plus this camera here you're watching me on was, it's around three and a half pounds with the microphone. So, you know, we're getting lighter and sex getting lighter as he eats food. He started off at around 18 odd pounds. Uh, but that's part of, of these trips, you, you harden yourself from the first few days and it's, it gets easier so I'm just waiting now for the fog to burn off a little more uh, it swooped in there early this morning just before 6 it was making its way in and at one point there an hour or so ago it was that thick I could only see about a hundred yards or so around the perimeter of the of our camp 
But as the sun comes out now, it's gonna burn off and we'll get geared up. You got him, Sack? Sack, he's not in there, he's over there, by. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll get geared up then and I'm gonna have a little pot of oatmeal and pack the camp up and we'll be gone. Good boy, Sack. Keep going, on, buddy. <laughs> Skipping a few rocks now. Up a dried riverbed. Or brook. It's not much of a river. Another hot one. This is a tack. Cool. Uh, over here, Sack. Sometimes uh, it's you know it's pretty gut wrenching work when it's this warm out. But it's all about pacing yourself and uh, taking little breaks like this. Whenever you feel like you're getting to that point where you're just exhausted, uh, don't go there. You know unless you're really really pressing. Take a break. And then, you know, five minutes or so, back at it. Right now, I'm just splashing water on my face all over my head. Saku's doing the same. Our packs are off. And uh, a couple little mouthfuls of water, too. Uh, so, it's good stuff. We just went through uh, a little stretch of Tuckamore. Tangly old spruce stunted, and uh, Zachary came cruising behind me, but he had no pack on, so I'm gonna go back and try to find it now. It must be hooked in somewhere. Where is it, Zach? Need that food. Can't lose Zachary's food. Zachary, where is it? Where's your bag? I'm fine. 